Welcome back to the channel Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluter's Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud. Today we will keep reading the chapter 1. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Let's go. Continuing chapter 1. A blog and a summer love. He knew the geographic and socioeconomic information about the South region very well. I even asked if he was from there since there was no identifiable accent from any part of the country on him. I still didn't know why that happened to him. Now I know. So during that week we were able to get to know each other a bit better, both of us and the rest of the team too, but very focused on the content of the work. Our school was very demanding about the students' performance, so we always dedicated ourselves a lot. Anyway we had already created a small loop, beyond the exchanges of looks, that was about to become stronger. Everything because of my blog. Fridays are the best days of the week during school time because they are always the prelude to the weekend with lots of mall, movies, games, parties, and for me a lot of reading and also a lot to add to my blog. Besides, on that particular Friday there was something more fascinating still going on in the class. Marcos had already gotten in with some of the boys in the room, so he was more at ease and the air of mystery had faded a little. The group work during the week before had helped and the exchanges of looks with me became more familiar. A curiosity on that day was that a news story about electrical disturbances appeared throughout the city in the previous weeks. I personally had not realized, after all the blackouts of energy always happened at dawn and I was already asleep. However, I had heard my parents say something about it, and on this last night there had been very intense events in some parts of the city. Even the colleagues were commenting on, from light bulbs exploding out of nowhere to sudden blackouts and overloads in some houses, they had not discovered the possible cause of the disturbances, but it seems to have generated a kind of general concern in part of the town's population. Note, it's not usual for me to care about such news, but it was very strange. Moreover, the event will prove important to our story later. The day before, at break time I was at the cafeteria with some colleagues talking about what we could do for the weekend. It was still early in the school year so there was not so much to study so there was still room for some fun. Note. From the seventh grade onwards everything is getting worse and worse, with more and more subjects and more and more tasks. So advice study. So you can at least have some free time at the end of the year. Marcos came to us still with that mysterious air, but having already gotten in a little bit with other boys he could look more closely at the girls and show more confidence as well. Of course, part of that confidence must come from the fact that he knew how handsome he was. After all, he should have some mirror in the house, and we'd done that geography work together during the week before. Despite the exchanges of glances with me during all those weeks, I never imagined that he would come and talk to me among the other girls. I thought he was coming to talk to Patricia or Deborah, after all, they fit the beauty model of the moment. Straight blondes with well-developed bodies, although they were barely 14 years old. But no, he came directly to speak to me among them. He passed them both as if they did not even exist, which made them half jealous, and addressed me. The brunette still a bit shallow but always standing out with the grades in the blog, of course. E. Mayra. E. Marcos. Ein Problem. Are you the mere pop from the blog? Yeah, it's me. You know? Yes. I follow your blog. It's really cool. Thanks. The girls began to distance themselves from our conversation. They started talking about other things and we stayed in hours. He said he was a movie fan and that he was very fond of my critics, who were very different from professional critics who always said standard things and did not know how to speak to younger audiences who like to identify with movies, sagas, and characters in a more personal way. I was also suspicious that he could have changed schools because he was interested in my posts about our events. But it was too much pretense. I thought so. My intention was to involve my classmates with things I considered interesting. Study groups, leisure tips, reviews of movies and books, class summaries, and photos galleries. It started to expand when I noticed that it had about 1,000 views a day. From diverse origins and locations, I noticed that subjects were of much greater interest than to my classmates, especially the reviews of fashion films. I remember that the movie review I had most views, and exploded from comments was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I think the atmosphere of adolescent dating in the midst of the Triwizard Tournament captivated hearts, and it was in this aspect that I concentrated. The Courtship. Note. Robert Pattison, the actor who played the role of Edward the Vampire in Twilight, is also in this Harry Potter episode. 
He is the wizard who dies at the end of the movie. We talked for all the time of the break and there was an immediate connection between us. The conversation flowed easy, as if we had known each other long ago. All because of our common interest in films and fantasy. At one point I found it strange that he seemed to know so much about me, but I remembered that in my blog there was a lot of expression of myself, I always ended up making connections between the commented movies and my life or colleagues. This was the basic tenet of his popularity among the young. He started hinting if we could not see some movie together, that he would even help in the reviewing. I was finding it all very nice, since he was a handsome boy after all, and it was rare for them to be so interested in me. This strangeness was starting to bother me. The break was over and we still talked a little more going towards the classroom. We stopped talking about each other and see if we could go to the movies together. He did not insist, but he wanted to make it clear that he insisted on going with me. Still felling on the top of myself, I sat down under the curious glances of my closest classmates. Leaving school later I could see Marcos helping a lady carry shopping bags around. It was a simple act, but it showed how much he seemed to be someone with attention and care for others. Much of my suspicions have lost strength, because among my current classmates I had never seen anyone help strangers in the street, especially the elderly. It was as if Marcos had come out from a different age or a different country. My cell phone started buzzing. Until the beginning of the night my cell phone was always accusing new text messages or missed calls. Most of them girls wondering what went on and what was still going to go with Marcos. In most of the answers I gave only evasive, for he did not even know what he could really ask. To my closest friends I showed that I really liked the attention he gave me, but that I was afraid of that whole interest having some obscure motive. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye.